Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a mixed vintage toy haul. Yeah, this is not a flea market hunt. This is also not an unboxing where I just, you know, ordered stuff online and have the shipping boxes here. Um, this is more like stuff, I mean, it's a mix. A couple of things I ordered online, but I have already taken them out of the box for several reasons. I needed to inspect them or whatever. Um, some of the stuff I just bought in stores. Some of the stuff I found. Like it's 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 a mix, and um, that's why <laughs> I decided to just like throw them all in like this one video, and then I will be able to put them on my shelf. Because um, when I'm not filming it beforehand and already putting it on the shelves, then I might forget that I haven't shown that in any video, and all of these things all of these toys don't have like the dedicated other video and it's also a mix not just a mix of where I found the stuff but it's also a mix of toy lines obviously and it's also a mix of like vintage mid new <laughs> I don't know how to call that um, and also new stuff so I don't know let's just like get into it I hope you will enjoy all of this colorful fun stuff because yeah it looks already really colorful when I see it. like everything that's out of the frame for you. I can already see it. So, uh, well, the first thing I want to show you is actually something um, that is like a follow up to one of my last, like, uh, you know, flea market videos. Uh, maybe you remember when I got my very first Mitch, actually not at a flea market, but at, uh, at a like thrift store. Nochmal, nochmal. And um, yeah, she is like hot skating or winter sport Mitch and she has none of her original outfit. Um, so I started searching for her original suit. She has like a blue, lots of pattern, like bodysuit, long, like long sleeves, long, long legs. Um, and I would be already happy with that one. I mean, there's also, I think, maybe a jacket. I'm not sure, but definitely like a little skirt over it. Uh, I actually found out that I own her original skis. <laughs> so these uh, I had in a flea market lot and I um, like, yeah, just recently found out that these actually go to her. So winter sport mish. So great, I have these. So now let's just find uh, the suit. I honestly, I always just find the one from Barbie, the pink one. And um, yeah. I don't want to buy that one, so like I want to have hers, otherwise she could just stay in that outfit. And then I found it uh, on eBay, um, an auction, and um, it was actually already strange enough that the first time around when this was for auction, up for, you know, I always um, make myself like a, you know, like a time, what is it, notification on my phone. Uh, when the auction will end, so I, I don't uh, forget to put my bid if it's still in the price range that I want. Um, and the first time around, suddenly this auction was gone. So I was like, eh? Did I miss it? No. It was just gone. So probably the the the, um, uh, the seller took it off of eBay. I don't know. And then the same seller, I recognized that it was the same seller, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, or like one or two weeks later, put all of the stuff up again because it had more than this one Barbie suit. And yeah, I, I bid on it. I won it for a couple of euros. I, I don't actually remember uh, how much. And you know what? They sent me the wrong suit. This one time I found the blue one online. They sent the wrong one. Yes, of course, I immediately messaged them. Uh, and they were like, oh, I probably forgot to put on my glasses. Yeah, the blue one I have actually sold already. I don't know what she said, like a year ago or something like that. Great. Great. <laughs> now I have the pink one from Barbie, not from Mitch. Uh, the only good thing is like I got all of my money back and didn't have to send this back. So I got this now for free. But I, yeah, so. You can imagine this is the one, the same kind of pattern, the same style. It's just mainly in blue with just a tiny bit of like, you know, other, you know, pink and etc. So this is mainly pink and Mitch is, 
it's mainly blue um, let's still put it on her I mean it's it's at least something from oopsie from her line uh, I will be right back when she's wearing it here she is I mean she looks also amazing in the pink outfit so I'm happy that I have this now and didn't have to pay anything directly for it because I got the money money back which wasn't very much to begin with but okay um, <laughs> uh, these shoes actually also go to the line these roller skates but they go to the Barbie so now I have like two pieces from Barbie and I have Mitch and the skis from Mitch but I mean um, no this uh, uh, cap also doesn't go to it I just leave it on because I don't have any of her like you know um, what is it called like when you go inline skating and you have this protective cap <laughs> this uh, would also go to her uh, these actually also are original these um, knee protectors um, so I have a couple of pieces but um, not the original suit uh, from the same seller because I was already like bidding on this suit which was actually in the picture it was the blue one anyways um, I realized that the seller had another set or at least two of the pieces that I was interested in and I also bid, bid on that one and won this this is like this number here and from far away it's like why what's that what's so special about this blue jacket and trouser thing yeah it has Mickey Mouse on it and it belongs to um, a Disney fun Barbie from 1994 uh, actually um, a version um, from Disneyland Paris so with a kind of a Euro Disney box and um, if you're a little more into Barbie you have probably heard about the Disney fun Barbies and especially if you like Disney as well uh, they came out during the 90s mostly in the US like at least for me I, I heard f from them like because they it's like Barbie going to the Disney parks they got a Mickey balloon and they always had some fun like outfit that's not like like a Disney character it's just like with Mickey Mouse on it with Minnie Mouse on it something like that they came with a Mickey hat like the cap you know the black cap etc and there's like every year I think from early to late 90s um, there were some we know that had the Disney castle on the box called the Disney World castle uh, but I was not really aware of the fact that also European versions were available they look different for example this one didn't even come with a Mickey cap Mickey hat because I think that's nothing that was ever available in a Disney Euro Disney as it was called at that time um, yeah but there are also more it's not just this one from 1994 there's like also like a pack I think with Barbie and Ken together like Disney weekend and, and so, there's more so I need to look into that but uh, I have searched them uh, definitely like on eBay etc and they're mostly still available from the US so I'm like what <laughs> but uh, this one definitely had the a European uh, Disney Park castle on it so the um, huge uh, Sleeping Beauty castle so I bought this and um, yeah I will just put this on one of my dolls and kind of combine the outfit because it's not the complete outfit obviously there would be another like you would have half a pink um, like top that's like with not checkered what it's called um, gingham gingham check pink and white gingham check also a hair bow pink and white gingham check and the Mickey Mouse bag or purse really in the shape of Mickey hat and pink I have just picked out a couple of pieces here that I will uh, put together so so she can have a complete outfit and I chose one of my you know simple style Barbie style dolls that I will put it on now and um, I mean it's always <laughs> almost kind of the same that she's wearing now right like printed trousers and then the, the jacket um, and I will be right back when I have dressed her okay and here she is <laughs> um, no Mickey ears but at least a big hair bow and I mean it's uh, one has almost like if it would be pink and white so this is a gingham check so then it would be almost like what the real deal had i just used a pink top now with a you know with a cherry <laughs> um and actually she would have pink shoes instead of these flat um, yellow ones but i mean the whole outfit looks pretty convincing if i would like so like make myself now one of those little you know mickey pouches I and mean, it's just a 
pouch in the shape of a Mickey hat. I could put this on her and um, I mean it would look pretty convincing as, a, as if it would be in the correct outfit, like the correct complete outfit. Um, you know, all the Mickeys. She would probably go to my, you know, more Disney um, dolls now in my bedroom. I think it's a cute outfit for now. So like I'm happy that the seller at least sent me the correct one for this. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, and I think I want to continue actually with another outfit. I have already put it on the correct doll. I'm not really the correct doll, but for my collection now it's the correct doll. Which is this one. Yeah. The doll itself is not new to me. This uh, is the Tycho Ariel. Actually the, you know, the one with the long hair, but not the Calypso, so not the dark. Uh, darker skin but the light skin but the long hair beautiful hair Ariel um, and this was actually the first Taiko Ariel that I found in a flea market like two years ago almost probably now um, and I never had something to wear for her uh, because the other two Ariels that I have I found them with their clothes and uh, I don't I mean I have another tail or actually two tails for for these Taiko Ariels um, but I never had the top and I also didn't want to put her in the same outfit that I already have on display so I was always on the look for finding like another set of fashion pieces um, and now I did so this was also an eBay auction and uh, when I when I when it arrived I don't know I, I put like like opened it up and immediately put it on the doll I couldn't wait um, so if you're not familiar with this toy line I say Tyco Ariel as it is the name of the toy line. Tyco is, is, is the toy company that made these. It was the first um, toy company that the Little Mermaid license uh, went to in the like late 80s, like from 89 on when the movie was released and then they had this, this license uh, uh, until Mattel took over all of the Disney princesses in like the mid 90s and 94 or something. Um, but until then Tyco produced these wonderful uh, dolls. And I had one in my childhood, um, the more like budget-friendly normal version, not the super long hair. But they have such beautiful faces. I love them. They have beautiful hair. It's really good quality. Uh, they're smaller than a normal Barbie. They're more like skipper size, I would say. And uh, other than Ariel, in different versions, <laughs> um, they also brought out one of her sisters. Um, uh, Arista, uh, a blonde one, and also made, um, you know, different versions of Arista. And this outfit actually goes on, on Arista, on Arista. Um, I think on the kind of a, um, like there's the Calypso Ariel and there is uh, the Arista version would wear this. It's not called Arista, um, Calypso Arista, but beautiful hair Arista. I don't know, so maybe it's even the counterpart to this doll directly, but I think it, it looks very tropical, so it's maybe more like the counterpart to the uh, Calypso Ariel. But I don't care if it goes actually to her sister or not, I finally have a complete outfit for, for, for this Ariel and can put her now in my display. Um, because it's not that rare that you find these, these um, like tails. But it's so rare to find the matching tops to it because they actually had like this was a really I think pretty successful line they made tons of dolls and also a lot of outfit packs always with you know a tail and a top and you find sometimes the tails but you never find the tops to it and this was a complete set I just I think I, I don't even know if it was an auction or if I just clicked by now I cannot really remember but it was a no-brainer for me I saw this and I was like I need this it doesn't matter to whom of them it goes it goes into that toy line and I will put it on my Ariel I think let's go to something else than dolls and something that's actually modern because I picked up two little modern poly pocket sets um yeah these are i don't know they don't have really names on it that's a really bit little, little bit sad 
after. I would just call them modern Polly Pocket bracelets because they were vintage bracelets. They were really similar, or at least one <laughs> that I cannot think of. Maybe there were more than one. Um, really chunky pieces that you, you can combine. Also, you could make a really long necklace. Uh, yeah, maybe also necklace, but actually it's bracelets. Um, and then you could put dolls in it, etc. And they have kind of revamped this uh, concept in a new Polly Pocket line. Actually, I think the first thing that uh, was released uh, was like this um, keepsake collection in this, you know, Royal Ballroom set. They There were several different pieces and like some jewelry pieces and one reproduction of, of a vintage, you know, bracelet. And then they came out with these new bracelets that are like from the look, they, they obviously go into the new Polly Pocket line. And um, I saw them on uh, Rachel Retro's channel and uh, I thought they were so cute. And I already, I, I think back then, not that long ago, but I commented on her video like, oh, if I ever see those like kind of for cheap in my area, like locally, I will pick them up. Um, because I mainly just buy modern Polly Pockets when I find them like at my local, like, you know, um, stores. I got this at, um, I didn't get this at McGuides, but I got this at Rossmann, which is a drugstore. <laughs> and they were already reduced. And I got two of them. Um, there's a third one, so you saw it's not the same. So um, this one is, I don't know, they don't have names, but uh, the C uh, uh, theme, so like underwater, dolphins, the poly doll is a mermaid. And the other one is more like woodland creatures and like mushrooms, etc. So you saw it already. I will not unbox it now. I don't know. I think I, I leave a lot of my modern Polly Pocket in uh, its original packaging, especially if you can see it really well. Because I also don't have it on display. But this is so cute. Look at these funny colors. This is look, I mean, this the, it, it's just so cute. These are like poppet. What's it called? Socket poppers? These that you can flop, 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 which children nowadays do love so much. <laughs> um, and you can, you know, sit the doll in there, like in the swing. You can stand her up in different pieces, clip her into the butterfly. There's like a door that opens. And yeah, <laughs> I couldn't resist. They just had these two. There is another one that's more like unicorn fantasy themed. But here's the mermaid one. You can sit her in the shell. Here this dolphin, you can clip her on. Some of these pieces are like um, rubbery, like this dolphin is more rubbery. Here's another like, throne. Here's another of these poppet suckers, socket poppers. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> it looks like a, a pearl and a, and a shell. It's a really cute design. I really like the colors. I really like the design and they are very similar to what the uh, vintage line did. Um, if I'm able to find the third one, I will also pick that one up. They were, I think originally the price was like $8.99 or something and they were already uh, reduced to like $6.99 or something like that. So um, yeah, <laughs> I was super happy. I was like surprised that I found them there because I'd never picked up any like toys before at Rossmann, but like at some of the bigger um, like stores that also sell toys at these, so really happy about that. And do I think, yeah, I think I will uh, already go to the next uh, thing that I also picked up in the store, actually the same day, because I was actually in that drugstore because something else that I didn't find there, but, that, but I, that I did find at another drugstore, which is this My Little Pony, um, you know, eyeshadow palette from, uh, from Catrice. And if you're at least a little bit into My Little Pony and this community, then you have seen them online. Um, like Catrice is, I actually don't know if it's a German like makeup brand. It's a pretty cheap, like prices are really like mid to cheap uh, price segment. And, um, but it's definitely European, but it might even be German. Um, and they have the collaboration with My Little Pony for the 40th anniversary, or anniversary of My Little Pony. And uh, they had two, like I think four nail, pol nail polish um, colors. 
they had a, a, like a brusher or some not brusher, a bronzer. Or was it bronzer or was it a highlighter? I don't know. It might have, might have been a highlighter. They had, they had a little pouch with some um, brushes. They had, oh, they had some other things. I think a little like a stick that you, I never used that. It's like, I think you, it's a primer before you put on, uh, for example, eyeshadow. Um, and I was a little bit late to the game because these, uh, of course, were also sold online, but um, in um, DM, which is another drugstore chain. And I've heard also in Rossmann uh, stores, they had these standees, you know, and you could buy them. And a lot of people bought a lot of them because I already see them online for higher prices, like on, you know, secondhand sites like eBay or eBay client selling, etc. So people are trying to sell them. And I was a little bit late to the game because I was like, actually, do I need that? I don't know. And when I was there, I mean, none of my, like Rossmann, um, truck store uh, stores had them, but DM uh, had it, the one that's like kind of in my area. And this was the, the only thing like left. I think there were two more nail polishes and one of these primers, but they didn't look really good. They were not really cute enough or like it wasn't like the, the My Little Pony logo was super small and they were not even colorful. They just had like black and white ponies on it and stuff like that. So I decided to just buy uh, the eyeshadow palette and this was actually also the main thing that I wanted if there would have been two eyeshadow palettes I think I would have bought two one to keep in good condition one to use because the colors are really fun I will use it so there you go this is obviously um, the retro My Little Pony artwork uh, we've got Starshine very very often used for these retro pictures we have the my little pony logo and this is here the catrice logo and what's actually super fun is not just that the colors are fun and colorful but they use pony names from the first generation so um for example we've got blossom windy uh, sky dancer uh, moonstone glory bluebell Cotton Candy, Applejack, Snuzzle, Parasol, Medley and Firefly. And I think some of the colors are really well chosen for the pony. Um, not all of them, some are a little bit too dark. For example, I wouldn't really say that this is Blossom's color. Not even the hair, <laughs> Blossom is way lighter. But um, let's take this for Cotton Candy, perfect. Or like this for Parasol, perfect. Or I don't know, Medley, very, very good. Like. Like her, more well, like her hair, I think. But, anyways, um, Sky Dancer, really good. Those are the colors of the ponies. This is definitely someone uh, either like was into ponies who designed that or did good research. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I will definitely get use out of this, but I will not like like bring it along on travels or something. I will be careful with it um, and not like smudge it over or get it crashed into whatever because yeah as I said I would have liked to keep one like clean but now I have one and that's fine I don't remember how much they were but they were not expensive around 10 euro I think less I, I don't actually remember but uh, I'm happy that I at least picked up this one and that's, that's fine I'm fine with that <laughs> Let's keep it going with My Little Pony. I have like one purchase that I was like, I'm not gonna keep this for another pony unboxing. I just wanna have a look at it. And then it was out of the little envelope um, because I bought this online, yes. And it's just a My Little Pony comb, but it's important for me because it's one of the Flutter Pony combs that I was missing. So here you go. This is one of the, um, uh, flower picks so pick it's they have the longer um, pieces here so I wouldn't call this a brush it's actually a brush or a uh, comb but they're called picks and the one with the flowers and then definitely the one with the uh, colored in you know middle parts uh, those always go to all of the flutter ponies I have all of the flutter ponies this was one of the combs that's missing now actually just freaking one comb is missing uh, that one actually goes to Tropical Breeze. Uh, let's get her out. Uh, it's actually the only one that I have that doesn't have wings because 
this thing is broken. I mean, I could not even put wings. <laughs> but anyways, maybe one day I will replace her with one that has wings. But yeah, this is her comb. She's from the second set of the Flutter Ponies um, from year five. So there was a first set in year four and then the second set in year five of My Little Pony. So um, yeah, and <laughs> what should I say? This is like the last one of the you know normal available flutter ponies because now I'm only missing the one from Hollywood which was the mail order flutter pony that was I, I honestly I bought this from the UK <laughs> so from eBay it was not expensive I mean also because it came just in a normal you know shipping envelope and a small one so I didn't have to pay any extra fees or anything it was just like I don't remember three pounds something and then the shipping was maybe I don't actually remember, but it was not super expensive. Uh, maybe too expensive for this little piece of plastic, but mm, collectors. <laughs> collectors gonna spend money. Okay, I think I'm keep it uh, going with my little pony uh, things because, yeah, it would be stupid. I, I'm continuing with the last, like, my little pony piece that will be in this video. And that is actually a pony. Oops. And that is her. Pretty bead. Okay. Wow, you have pretty bead, right? You you have all of the rock and bead ponies. I do, but I didn't have this one. It's not just the double, obviously. It's a variant. And if I show you my other pretty pr pr pretty bead, you might be able to see the difference. Can you see? Can you tell? I mean, yeah, she's lighter in color and body color, but she has blue hair. While this other one has like purple hair. You can definitely, you can definitely tell the difference. I think on camera it looks more similar, but like uh, in person it's definitely a huge difference. Ah. So this is the one that I had. This is the normal version. Uh, that was released in Europe. This, though, oopsie, is the version that was released in the US. Yeah, so she's more common in the US, so the blue haired version. Uh, but I did not get her from the US. That was such a crazy coincidence how I found her. Um, and I was not really sure if it would be this variant when I when I bought her uh, because it actually uh, was just like um, on Vinted. Yeah, it was on Vinted um, uh, a lot with My Little Ponies. Actually, all of them were fakies except this one and they were extremely cheap. They were not sold as a lot. He said like you can buy them like separately uh, and she was like one euro and then like uh, also shipped super inexpensive like with uh, you know a Warensendung so like that was just two additional euros so I paid three euro for her but like the photo was not really clear a when you just um, like the first photo that you see uh, on, on Vinted uh, when you haven't really clicked on it didn't show her because she was like more on the side to the photo it was like a landscape photo like she was more like on the right side um, so I was when I clicked on it I was like oh, always those fakies but you gotta have a look at those fakie lots sometimes there's a real pony in there and there was I was like oh cool she's cheap <laughs> I might buy her and then I looked closer and I was like I mean I would probably also have bought her just because even if I already had her for like one euro huh I was like wait is that hair blue I don't know, it's probably just from the photo because sometimes photos look crazy different than what, what you know what the thing looks in reality. Maybe the photo just like was taken like it looked very very blue the hair. So I was like actually not like I didn't have like high hopes for it to be really the US ver uh, like variant. That's why I have already taken her definitely out of the packaging because I needed to check and she was I was like it really is it really is the variant <laughs> and um 
you actually never ever see this one <laughs> over here so i'm really like like asking myself how did this person like why did this person have the the um like um u.s variant of pretty peach uh because all of the other ponies also it was a guy so it was a probably this was from his like children or whatever leftovers and he, I, I i don't know but all of the other ponies were like very cheap and ugly normal you know fakies from all sorts of different types so um not i think even i think even more of the like g3 fakey types and not even really like g1s and then then there's this pony and like <laughs> yeah so that's why she's already out of the box and not waiting for the next big pony unboxing uh, i just couldn't wait for her and she's in such good condition she was just a little bit dirty her hair is gorgeous and yeah the body color in general is lighter than she's darker purple and she has the dark purple hair and she has like just dark blue hair uh, other than that um country of origin they're both china um and uh, yeah, the Rock and Beat ponies are one of my absolute favorite sets. Like my childhood favorite pony, a half note, the orange one, obviously, is from that set. And um, yeah, and now I have like this variant. And one day I definitely plan to make the uh, variant make, I say, because it, it is not out there. But there was a, um, you know, unproduced, like the first. Uh, version that they used for you know, toy catalogs um, of this pony had a blue body color <laughs> so I also want to like customize one day one of the um, um, you know one of the ponies of this pose make her blue and and then <laughs> trying to to have all three kind of variants of this pony although the third one was not really available anywhere um, crazy enough I don't have any of um, their accessories like they came with a brush in a shape of a guitar like of an electric guitar in like super neon colors I don't have any of them it's four ponies obviously then four different of these guitar brushes I don't own any of them because they are really expensive and apparently also pretty rare like this is a pony from a little bit later in the line so she's from year nine so like 1990, 1991, but it's not super late. It's not that this is, was one of the ponies that wasn't released in the US anymore or whatever. Um, still, you never find these brushes and I actually don't even know why you never find them because they had strings around so that the ponies could wear them. Like my childhood half note was always wearing like the guitar brush around the neck because it looked like she would be playing guitar. So I wonder why, why those are like I never see them. I don't even see them for high prices. I just don't see them. I mean, I have seen some that were like ridiculously priced. Sometimes you see them together with a pony, but then the pony is like uh, up there price-wise. Um, yeah, but I was so thrilled that this was really the US variant. Anyways, um, what else do I have for you in stock? Well, <clears throat> let's get to something that's maybe not that interesting, but it's actually pretty cute. And I'm happy that I did find it because this whole bag of modern LPS was just waiting out in the street for me. Uh, it was actually just like, uh, I mean, right now when I'm filming this, it was last weekend. I'm pretty sure this video goes up way later, way later. And um, I went to two different, different flea markets and nothing one of them was even the children's flea market but like <laughs> but on the way back from that flea market i noticed on the side of the street a little box and it was, wasn't even that little it was huge and yellow and it was a lego box but i looked inside and it had these and so many more little toys in there so i grabbed the whole box and it was really you could take it away this is something that uh, in our neighborhood here a lot of people do when you have something that you're not interested in anymore that you think some other people might be interested but you're not really in, into like selling it or going to the flea market just put it out in the street put a little sign like zu verschenken so you can just free free take it away if you want and um, yeah i have found clothes there i have we have found books in those boxes we have found so many things even some of my like furniture is just from the street and this time 
It was a box full of, actually most of it was these um, Zimba fillies. They are little ponies, um, blind back ponies. Uh, I, I don't like them. I just picked out a couple of them. I can at least show you um, because they were really popular a couple of uh, years ago. Here in Germany, Zimba is a German toy company that are pretty famous for like doing knockoffs of <laughs> other famous toy lines. And I would say these were definitely inspired by My Little Pony, especially the more like, you know, blind back ponies from the generation four or maybe even the pony builds from generation three and 3.5. Uh, the most of them in the box were these. I usually don't really like them, but I thought I might just keep a couple of them because these are really pretty clean. Um, they are all flocked, they're always flocked. Um, that's why they they don't like keep, keep this shape for really long when children play with them. Um, so these were pretty clean and they had pretty nice like you know molds and special like glitter parts and stuff like that that's why I decided to just keep them so I have some if I ever want to talk about you know miniature pony toys or something like that um, they even made smaller ones which I had no idea but there's even smaller ones Ta -da. <laughs> see um, so usually if it would have been just these like these uh, fillies, I would not have picked up the box. You find them so often at flea markets, all the time. But what piqued my interest was I saw that there are some of the modern Little S pet shops and yeah, I actually have stopped collecting them. Um, like in my first like maybe one and a half years going to flea markets, um, I always picked them up because they were like a little, like, like little gift, like uh, like take away uh, for really cheap most often like 50 cents or something like that some, some of them I even got like you know for free when they just gave them to me or something when I did not find anything else at least I found a little less pet shop or something but I have quite uh, acquired a big collection of them and I'm not even displaying them anymore and actually stopped buying them but now in a box of free bees at the street I couldn't I couldn't leave them um, so I think I will just pin the camera down uh, because most of them are really cute and I think there's just one that I already have so not even doubles. So I always love the colorful ones and the sea creatures the most and here we have this little whale, super cute. I think my favorite out of this lot is this turtle. I'm not sure if I have exactly this one. This one is even glittery. So I might have just a like um, green turtle already that's not glittery, but oh, this is so cute. Um, we have another super colorful one, which is this toucan here. Super fun patterns. Um, these are from the 2000s. So I think they are from I can never really say like the they are obviously not the first little less pet shops They were made by Kenner the first ones in the 90s. These are from the 2000s when Hasbro produced them um, But I can never tell if it's like the second or the third generation or whatever this is called But they all have the bobble heads and I think they're all from the same generation They're all from around like you know the early to mid like I don't know, 2003 2004 2005 2006 around that time they were released Also, like out of this box, uh, one more filly that I thought is interesting because it doesn't have any flocking on it. It's just a golden one, and I think immediately when I have them without flocking, they look better. I don't. I just don't like flocked things. I don't know. Um, um, I think these might also. These are really small uh, ones. There's a bat and a dragon. These might also come from the Philly line. They're probably from Zimba because uh, they have this look to them. They don't look like, I don't know, some, I think they, they are from, from the same line. They also have these gems on them, similar to what, you know, some of the Phillies have on their crowns, etc. But I, I found them super interesting. So I, I thought I also keep those 
never seen uh, them. Um, then we have here this little crocodile. This uh, I think is from Hatchimals. It has an H underneath. Hatchimals is a little, it's a toy line um, made by Spin Master. Also like, I think they're still available also sometimes. So I don't know how, when they started, probably in the 2010s or whatever. And yeah, there was a Pokemon in it. Ta-da! <laughs> it's even like one of those, you know, mobile phone straps that actually nobody except for me still uses. And uh, this Pokemon is from 2008. So it is from the time when this generation uh, was released. I don't know the English name, sorry, I should have researched it. Um, in German this one is Driftzeppeli. Driftlon, Driftzeppeli. And this was the generation of Pokemon that I played the most. It was in 2007, 2008. Uh, the Pearl and Diamond editions. And yeah, this is one of the ghost Pokemon. Ta da! Ah, oh, yeah, actually, also, I uh, forgot to show this because it was already on uh, the pencil. Uh, also, from, I think it's also from Feely, uh, not flocked, that's why I liked it. Uh, a little pencil topper. So one of those bigger pens, I have it now on an <laughs> orange colored pencil. Um, I don't know, immediately when they're not flocked, they look better. Uh, I think we are gonna get to one of the very, very exciting uh, things. Um, because it's a special toy line a little bit. And um, actually there's also a little bit of a story <laughs> to it, as always. Uh, because I did not really find this myself. Um, one day, like, Cotton Candy Kittens texted me um, with a, like, she sent um, a link to an um, Kleinanzeigen ad. Uh, hey, do you think uh, do you think this is interesting or something like that? And it showed tons of like plushies because she's more into plushies than me. Cotton Candy Kittens is one of also my you know vintage toy <laughs> collecting friends that we go to flea markets sometimes together, etc. And um, she, as I said, she's more into plushies than me, so I never look up you know random plushy lots on eBay or Kleinanzeigen or Vinted or wherever. Uh, she does. And uh, I was like, uh, she was like, don't you think, uh, well, we will get to what this, don't you think this is, <laughs> are you like, like, don't you think this is what I think it is? Because there was one thing in this plushy lot um, that was, uh, that's pretty exciting. And I was like, yeah, I think you are right. This is exactly what, what you think it is. Will you, will you get it? Because I thought she was just like asking me if I think this is what it is. Um, but no, she was like, oh, I'm not interested in it because I don't like the small ones. I thought you might be interested in it. And this whole plushie lot just was um, like 10 euro. It was a, like a huge lot. Like I, I don't even know, like 30 plushies or something. <laughs> um, so I started uh, the, you know, I started to write uh, the person on, on, on Kleinanzeigen. Hey, is this still available? I would like to buy the lot, blah, blah, blah. It, are all of the plushies still in it? Yes. But you know, this conversation was pretty, it was pretty like exhausting because the person, the seller, wasn't really able to write in like in German really good. Uh, also not in English. So, oh, language barrier, first thing. And after everything that I like always asked, she, I know it was a, was a woman, always was like, I have to ask my husband. <sighs> because like, for the, like how much the shipping is, like blah, if, if I should just send her the money via PayPal or via da da da. It took like several weeks <laughs> before we had settled on this because she was also not answering very frequently. And, and it took like almost her a week to find out how much the shipping would be. She always had to ask her her, uh, her husband, etc. Like, oh. So when this huge box finally arrived, I was like, phew. It worked out. It yeah, it was just 10 euro and then the shipping on top, which was like five. I don't even remember. No, it was like seven because it was a really, really huge box. I think I have a little bit of footage still just for my camera because I showed it to Cotton Candy Kittens when it finally arrived. Um, but before I show you this, I show you what was in the box, which is definitely worth way more than 10 euro. And it's this. And this is a little brush of loves.
creepy. Yeah, so maybe you remember that I like once on my channel already had a brush I love, which is this one. So this is how a big brush I love look like. A toy line from the 80s, first produced by Amtoy, then translate is like a transferred over to Tyco. Um, and um, 87, 88, 89, I think 87 to 89 they were produced. Um, they are super thought after <laughs> nowadays, you know, especially with vintage toy and um, brush collect, brush, plush collectors. Um, they have a mirror here, their paw was scented, like, you know, powder. They have a tail that has like a brush on it, etc. And they are this size and this shape more like bears, you know, like teddy bears. Super colorful, just extremely cute. And the same toy line also produced the small ones here. They had a plastic face and were more like, I don't even know what animals, they, they could also be like little caterpillars or something, I don't know. They are not like teddy bears sitting upright. And they have a little, um, I don't know, thing here that you can use, put it on your wrist, like a wristband, and then you have it like sitting on your like, wrist and you can carry it around. And these also have these long tails with a brush on it. I uh, have a little bit of brushable hair, like really, like nylon probably, or I don't even know what, what hair type that is. Um, and um, they have these faces. And um, brush loves and also the little brush loves are pretty expensive online, so I've never really dabbled into buying them. Um, also this one here, the big one, I actually just owe to Cotton Candy Kittens because I traded it with her, uh, from her. And now this one, I would have never even looked at these plushy lots online and I would have never found this one if it wasn't for her. <laughs> so if you watch the video, thank you a thousand times because uh, for 10 euro you never get one of those. Those definitely go more for 50 or something. Um, this is one from uh, the line like um, that was released in the US and in Europe. There are European exclusives um, that have actually, all of them have a little like flower on the foreheads, but this is one that was like released like everywhere. There you go. They have these super funny looking cute faces, you know, plastic or rubbery. Uh, they have a little tuft of hair that is more like brushable hair and the rest is, is just a furry, um, you know, plush. This is one of the more colorful ones. They are, most of them are more like pastel colors. So this is one of the more, you know, um, you know, bold colors. It has the same style of brush, but not like anything else, no mirror or something, but this, you know, wristband thingy. <laughs> and this one actually is called Twinkleberry. So I don't know, berry, maybe probably because of this more like berry color around the, uh, around his face. It looks a, almost a little bit like a lion. Like, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know what, what animal this is supposed to be. I mean, it's just a little brush I love. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> it was worth it to have this kind of stressful communication with the seller waiting for such a long time and then receiving the box and yeah, it was in it. It's in a good condition. Uh, I actually just kept one other um, uh, toy from this lot because all of the rest, uh, you, I mean, you, you saw it. it was, some of them were really creepy like this monkey or uh, I don't know, old um, Bugs Bunnies or like there was one like Bob. So it was from all decades actually, to totally across everything. And the only other thing that I kept is this little doll. Uh, I don't know anything about it. It's not from a toy line that I know, but it's, it's, I don't know, it spoke to me. It's like my aesthetic and um, I would probably put it to my uh, Rainbow Bright dolls because it's, it's a little bit similar. So. It also has a hard plastic face or rubbery plasticky face. Uh, the way the eyes are painted and the whole like you know face looks, it reminds me a lot of 
you know, strawberry shortcake or like also Rainbow Bride. So, so this sort of thing. It's very similar to Rainbow Bride in a way that, you know, it has like just a um, plush or like soft body. Also, this material is very Rainbow Bride like because it is like this kind of water resistant uh, material. Um, but and it has like it is obviously also in rainbow colors, but they are really really pastel. So this is like just like a little harlequin, just a little clown. Um, has this like red bobble here, pom pom, and red socks. Um, the color here, this little mesh material, uh, has a couple of stars on it that are also like with little with pearls embroidered. So does it have more than one? Yeah, here's another one in the back. Eh, another pearl. Um, it's overall in really good condition and it's just cute. So I decided to also keep that one. All of the rest I put out on the street uh, because I don't want to deal with, you know, selling those toys that are not really worth anything. At least I don't, I didn't know. Um, and I hope like children or someone else because the whole box was gone the next day. Probably someone else took the whole box and even if this person then sells it or puts it on the flea market or whatever, I don't care because I don't have to deal with it. I got out of this what I wanted. <laughs> and um, yeah, the price was just too good to not buy. Like, I also didn't want to ask if I could just buy this one thing because when you do that and sometimes sellers start like trying like, mm, to find out why does she only want this one thing is this worth something no not gonna risk that if the whole lot is cheap enough no i, I bought that so and i also want to include one thing that just arrived today in the mail <laughs> it just came in a flat envelope and i was like what what is that what did i buy haha <laughs> yes i won another auction sometimes with auctions i forget that i win them uh, if it's not really like a pony or something uh, I want another auction for a doll dress, not Barbie this time, oopsie, but can you already see it? Lady Lovely Locks. It was like an auction, I found it online, I was like, oh, okay, let's see if it stays cheap. It stayed really cheap, I think it was like three euro that I bought, like, like that I paid for it and then a little bit of shipping. Um, I don't know I just clicked and I, I won the auction so it was not really something that I definitely wanted to have what I was always searching for but it's one of the really really cute lady lovely locks um, you know fashion pack dresses so that did not come directly on a doll but in separate fashion packs it's actually called the um, garden party gown and it's one of the ones that I always found the cutest so uh, it's not the full fashion pack because there was also like a little like headpiece actually attached. Uh, condition wise it's okay. There is a little bit of loose thread here so this has come a little bit loose. We can just stitch it on again. It's easy because the rest you know it's not really um, sometimes these mesh these super super soft fabrics are like frayed. It's not really frayed anywhere except a little bit here at the sleeves but like it's pretty good. This is straight. So this thing where you can put on the pixie tail it came with one pixie tail that's not the one that was in this pack this is a normal rabbit one i think it this fashion pack came with a bird one that uh, had this curly like the super like these two types of hair one with a really curly hair but you know oops this is how you were supposed to put it on or obviously in the hair but the pixie tail is nice and i never say no to a, um, another additional pixie tail and it came with one shoe <laughs> um, it could be the one that came directly with the dress because the dress had two of these typical pink Lady Duffy Locks shoes. Um, but I'm also not mad about this because one of my dolls is literally missing a shoe, a pink one. <laughs> so um, like this one that I have, here is the original first Lady Lovely Locks. She has just one shoe. <laughs> so I don't know, I think it's not exactly the same shade of pink, it might be a little bit paler but I don't care. <laughs> so, ta-da, she has now a second shoe. I don't know if I can put her somewhere here, probably not, so let's just put the <laughs> shoe here. 
and um, I have actually a double Lady Lovely Locks that I found at the flea market. Um, she is the Sparkle Pretty or Pretty Sparkle, like Sparkle Pretty. Um, and uh, she came with a dress, but I have one and exactly this dress already on display. So I might just change this dress, obviously keep it, um, for this. So uh, she also does not have shoes now. Uh, but she is uh, more like in the back of my display, so you don't see her feet anyways. <laughs> so, isn't that adorable? So it's a little bit shorter, so it's, I mean, it's, what is it called? Garden party gown. So a garden party, it's probably when the weather is nice and you can, uh, don't need to wear long <laughs> dresses. Uh, in, in German, this one was actually just called Frühlingsfest, or like spring celebration or something. So. Very, very soft material and I love the cut of this, so um, yeah, that's everything, I think. <laughs> um, it was quite a lot, but like small pieces here and there and, and you see I couldn't like really put them, most of them not in like dedicated other videos, uh, stuff that I found on the street, you know, the struggle with this jumpsuit. A pony that I was like, is it really this variant, etc., etc., and a couple of things that I also just bought in stores. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little um, more messy uh, toy haul video. Usually, I do unboxings or I do you know flea market videos. So, this is more like an in between thing. Um, if you enjoyed it, then please don't forget to give this video a like, so a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel, and. Um, you don't have to be afraid to like a video or anything. It's not that I will see who likes this video or anyone will see, oh my goodness, this person liked a toy video or something like that. It's just give this video a like and that helps my channel out to get more, you know, uh, be like more visible also for other people. Same goes to comments. You can, I, I always appreciate if you give a, a comment to this video and for example, not to my community post about the video put the comment directly on this video and it hasn't to be a long comment if you enjoyed the video and you want to like like um like give something to me because i don't have a patreon or anything like that just give a comment on the video and it could also just be such a fun video thank you very much or something like that i don't know uh, but i'm not begging for for comments or anything you don't have to i'm also super happy if you just watch my stuff so um yeah thank you so much for watching um see you soon and may the toys be with you. Bye.